Yo, what up? Yo, what up, my Slater Climber homies? Today we're gonna do a special episode of my crib. Check this out, my climbing crib here. Yo, first back up, we gotta check out this whip right here. Check out this whip, the Duramax. Colorado, son. Check this out. Right over here. Woo! Look at this. This is a window. This is a window right there. What? Come on over here. Check this out. Check out these rims. What size rims do you think these are? How does it matter? Fresh as hell. Come on. Check this out. What? This is the soul right here. Intex soul. This thing's got some soul, my son. Check this out. Come on. Now let me introduce you to my dogs. That C A W G's. Check this out right here. What up, homie? What up, pound it? Ah, you frontin'. Check this out right over here. Go over here. Come on. Come on up in here. Look at Check this sink out. What? Fresh. You even got a bathroom shower in this. What? Look at this thing. A toilet. Shower. Damn. And of course, I got the queen size for my queen behind the camera. What? Fresh as hell. All right, now let's get right to mail time. Hey, Bear Climbers, I'm on the road, so I figured I'd introduce you to the travel trailer. If that whole scene didn't just make sense, that's, that's what that was about. I got a travel trailer to travel around for work and for making climbing videos for you guys and stuff. So I figured since I'm already in a parking lot and I'm going to make a video, uh, a mail time video, I may as well just make a fool of myself anyway. So let's get into the first question. Let's see for mail time. Henry writes in, do a Connecticut tree hitch. Okay, let's do a Connecticut tree hitch. Let's zoom you guys in up here and I'll show you what a Connecticut tree hitch is. Okay, so a Connecticut tree hitch is a handy dandy way to let, let's say you're lead climbing and you want to set a belay system up on half the root and there's a big healthy tree up in that root and you obviously can't put the rope, a bite of rope over it and I mean of course you could probably just go something like that and just tie a bunch of overhands or something but this is a nice little trick to know and of course you have to do it right now. In a real case scenario, you're not just going to hold on to this tree on the cliff and just start messing with your rope. The first thing you're going to do is clip in securely because this tree is your savior. This is this is Jesus right here. So you're not going to you're not going to mess up. You need a backup. OK, so first you put your backup on there. All right. And now we're going to mess with our rope. So we're going to pull in all this up, all this slack here and we're going to start our Connecticut tree hitch. So what you do is you'd put a bite of rope around the tree just like that and then you grab another locking beaner. I have one right here. This one's kind of odd because it has a little gate there but whatever it'll, it'll do the job. And what you're going to do is it's almost like a girth hitch except we can't pull all this rope through here and jump through there myself to make a girth hitch so we're going to kind of make one with a rope. Now let's say we did it the, the, the wrong way which would be just clipping it right here. Let's clip it right there and and step back. It might look like it might hold and then it'll pop right through. We go flying off and our beaner goes falling down. But hey, we're not dead because guess what? We put it back up. Okay, so let's try it again and get another locking beaner because we just dropped ours off the cliff. That's why you always practice before you do anything. Okay, so we got our bite of rope wrapped it around the tree. We're going to put another bite of rope through here and now we're going to clip the working end which is over here. Okay, this is the end you want to clip. The bite, the bite it end. And then you choke that up a bit. And then as you see, when you pull on that, it acts like this is now the loop, like the other side of the rope to make a girth hitch. And then you could add another rope over here to do something. And you could uh, probably even feed this through and choke, choke it up higher. So it's definitely a handy dandy neat little trick. Uh, as long as you do it right and you make sure it's right, it should work out pretty well. It's a lot less slippy than let's say if you just uh, took a rope and wrapped it around and then clipped a beaner to it and then use that beaner. This could get pretty slippy, slippery. It's not as uh, frictiony as what we just did there. Another option would be doing a bow line there and clipping into it. But uh, I hope that answers your question and interested. Uh, that was a little bit interesting. So let's do another uh, question. I think I'll have to go back to the studio for that question though. Hey guys, welcome back to the studio. I actually just got in. It's like 11 o'clock or something on, at night on a Friday night. I gotta get this video done, this last question answered, and then uh, whip a video together for tomorrow for you guys. I think this is like the 33rd episode I made. So it's 33 weeks in a row I've been making episodes. I ain't gonna miss a week now. So let's get to this last question. Uh, let's see, Dan Clark writes in, uh, maybe you can, I'm planning a Via Ferretta adventure in Telluride this fall. I don't have a lot of 
cash so I'm putting together a lanyard setup. So basically he wants to know can you use a daisy chain to set up kind of a, a ball a balling on a budget <laughs> baller on a budget setup. So basically it would be like this. It'd be a daisy chain here and if you don't know what a Via Ferretta is it's basically when they have a cable going across a traverse and they're moving across it and doing something like that. First of all, super jealous. I wish I could do that, but uh, a bit work is crazy right now for me. So anyway, you have a daisy chain and a beaner. Now, my advice is uh, you wouldn't want to use a beaner like this because it would be a pain in the butt uh, for clipping and unclipping as you traverse across. Now, of course, you're going to have two lanyards. So step number one, don't use this kind of beaner. It's the double gate beaner. You probably want... You wouldn't want a screw gate beaner. You'd want one of these uh, spring-loaded carabiners like this. Now, of course, if you're going to do it like this, you're going to be traversing a lot slower than everybody else because you're going to have to unscrew it and clip and move over. And if you're going to have two of them, the trick is to not pass them over like this because then you're going to end up having a whole twisted mess. And then you're going to unclip it, both of them probably, to untwist it. And that's going to be the moment when your friend says, hey, this would be pretty funny if I give him a push. And then you fall down and become a statistic. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, make sure you just get that down right, uh, passing it. Here's an option you could do. Um, for work, I use these right here, which are lanyards. And I don't know if you get these at Home Depot for cheaper, uh, but you could clip this in. And I like the fact that this is a big hook right here. And you clip it on real easy like that. And plus, uh, it's, it's locked actually. It's like a locking beater because unless you're pushing this in and pulling, you know, it's not going anywhere. So this is another option you could use. You could use two of these. Excuse my, these are really old, so excuse their mess. I should actually be throwing these out. So you're gonna be clipping like that and clipping like that. This might be a cheaper option for you. If it's rated for, if it's rated for safety for workers, then it's gonna be overrated for climbing uh, recreational stuff. So yeah, like I said, just go like that. Make sure you don't get it all twisted, and you should be having some fun. Well, I hope that answers your question. And uh, I gotta run to my computer now and whip this video up. So Joshua Perry, climbing out of here. I'll see you next week. Oh, I almost forgot. Actually, another thing, one more thing, is you want to make sure, I said this in another video, if you're going to be using a daisy chain, uh, do not clip into two loops at the same time like that. Because you're no longer in this one big loop, you're only relying on that single stitch there. And if that pulls out, then you're going to fall. So if you're going to use a daisy chain, just clip to one thing, uh, and just be careful what you're doing. So there you go. Another tidbit. All right. Now I really got to climb out of here. I'll oh, forget it. I already climbed out of here. I got to run to my computer.